as you may have heard, an inquest has been told that a locum doctor from Germany injected a patient in Cambridgeshire with a fatal dose of painkiller. The coroner in Wisbeach was told 70-year-old David Gray was in severe kidney pain when he received 10 times the normal dose of diamorphine. The victim thanked the doctor for helping him, but hours later was dead. The case has highlighted the issue of out-of-hours care in this region. David Gray died at the hands of a foreign doctor, a doctor who has escaped prosecution here. Today, his two sons and his partner, Linda Bubb, arrived at the inquest in Wisbeach, knowing that Dr. Daniel Abani would not be there to answer questions. He's staying put at his clinic in Germany, where he continues to work. He was on his first shift for a GP out-of-hours service provider called Take Care Now when he injected Mr. Gray at his home in Maney in February 2008. Linda Bubb described how Dr. Ubani had difficulty communicating when he arrived at their home. He told the coroner he muttered a lot and would talk to himself. She said he seemed a bit dithery and she felt he didn't seem to know how much diamorphine to give to David Gray. She told the doctor that he'd previously received injections of 100 milligrams of the painkiller pethidine. Dr. Urbani went on to inject a fatal dose of diamorphine, 100 milligrams of it, 10 times the normal amount. Linda Bubb told the coroner David Gray had been in extreme pain. He took the doctor's hand and said, thank you very much, but within a short time he was dead. TCN, the out-of-hours provider, has now lost its contract with uh, Cambridgeshire PCT but it seemed to take an extraordinary amount of time before they acted, despite all the evidence they had about how uh, TCM were failing in their ability to provide the service. David Gray's own GP, Dr Richard Herson, said on hearing how his patient had died that he was personally appalled and very upset to think that such an accident could happen. The inquest's also examining the death of another of Dr. Urbani's patients. Iris Edwards died a day after she was seen by him. Dr. Urbani was charged with death by negligence over Mr. Gray's death at Witten in Germany, given a nine-month suspended sentence and ordered to pay 5,000 euros costs. The prosecution there means he can't be charged in the UK. Sally Chitzoy, BBC Look East, Wisbeach. The body of a woman has been recovered from a frozen lake in Essex. Police divers were called in after the woman was reported missing when she went to find her dog yesterday afternoon. It's thought she fell into the water at Lee Valley Park near Nasing. She's the third person to die in similar circumstances in the last few weeks. Footprints on a frozen lake. These may be the last steps of a woman who drowned after she followed a dog out onto the ice. This member of the ambulance service witnessed the desperate attempt to rescue her. The lady was located approximately 40 feet behind where I'm standing now, below some trees. The specialist diving team brought her to a place of safety. She was treated and stabilised by firefighters and paramedics. Rushed to an awaiting trauma team at the Princess Alexander Hospital in Harlow, where sadly she died. On the edge of the lake, the ice is beginning to thaw, and if you pick a piece up, you can see that it's only a couple of inches thick, enough perhaps to support a dog's weight, but not much else. And now temperatures are rising, the warnings to the public are becoming ever more urgent. Because it's been thawing over the last two or three days, the, the, uh, the strength of, of, of the ice just isn't um, uh, capable of, of taking anybody's weight. So don't even test it, don't even go near it, keep away from the ice. The winter weather had already claimed two lives here at Brightwell Lake near Ringstead in Northamptonshire. Two friends out shooting fell in. Northamptonshire's canals froze, but now they're thawing to another warning. This time for dog owners. When you see a pet in, as a pet owner myself, I can understand there's a moral dilemma and, and one wants to be able to, to, to save that animal if they think they're in jeopardy. Uh, there is a very rare situations where the animal doesn't actually get themselves out of it, but unfortunately people cannot. Back at Nasing, Essex police said the dog the woman was trying to rescue here turned up later unharmed. The emergency services don't want anyone else to walk to their deaths across the ice. Gareth George, BBC Look East. A decision hasn't yet been made on whether an inquest will be held into the deaths of an elderly couple in Northamptonshire. The bodies of Jean and Derek Randall were discovered when police broke into their bungalow last Thursday. 
Tests revealed they died from natural causes. Northamptonshire County Council is carrying out a serious case review. Now, the big freeze may be on the way out, but as we heard last night, it's leaving behind a lot of potholes in our roads. And there doesn't appear to be too much sympathy for the councils who are responsible for keeping the roads in good repair. Our chief reporter, Kim Riley, has been looking through your emails. Yes, the snow and the ice of the past couple of weeks have made things pretty dicey for drivers. When it all disappears, some perils remain. Potholes, thousands of them across the region. Roy Edwards from Bishop Stortford has little time for Hertfordshire County Council saying it needs more cash after the big freeze to keep the roads in good repair. I've complained three times over the last two years about a local road and they've still not repaired it. He says if they'd done the necessary work before, the roads got so bad, they wouldn't have to spend so much now. John Beavis from Weybourne in Norfolk says the potholes weren't caused by snow and ice, but a continued lack of routine maintenance. Robin Hughes from Long Melford has just lost a case in the small claims court against Suffolk County Council after two tyres suffered pothole damage near his home. We uh, hit two potholes um, on the left side of, uh, of the road, obviously, the, the front and rear, rear side tyres. And um, both of them were damaged as a result of that and uh, couldn't be repaired and had to be replaced. Uh, cost, quite a considerable cost of £324. 79-year-old Jerry Ashley from Bedford says a few years ago, out cycling, he ploughed into a large pothole. I broke my pelvis, cracked a bone in my hip and broke my left elbow. He says around him now there are potholes everywhere. Carol Dobkin had no luck claiming damages off Braintree District Council. My car was damaged by a pothole last January and my realistic and warranted claim was denied. She says a lot of people like her can't afford to pay for damage done to their cars due to what she calls council's neglect. The well, Hertfordshire Highway says it has about 30 hole fixing teams out each day making hazardous potholes top priority. It's asked for patience while they tackle the mammoth task of assessing damage and making repairs. Well, thanks for all your comments. You can, of course, email us at any time or call 08457 630 630. Stuart. Thank you very much. Still to come on Look East, Northampton Saints showcase their talents as seven players are called up. A man with only months to live has appealed for treasured family pictures stolen by thieves to be returned. Richard Franzen, who lives in Essex, says he's devastated. The pictures were stored on computer equipment which was stolen. Richard Franson is 64. He's just had surgery on a brain tumour and doctors have told him he hasn't got long left, possibly just a matter of months. It's an awful time for the family and the theft of these photos and video clips gathered over 10 years and irreplaceable has added to their distress. Of all things that you could have had dished out to you, this is probably, I would say, the most unfair one of the lot. With Richard, he is at a low ebb in his life. So if anybody's got a heart out there, please, because someday you might find yourself in the same position. You never know in this life. What goes round comes round sometimes. The theft happened in this part of Basildon, at the home of the couple's son. A laptop, hard drives, in total equipment worth £5,000 was taken. Detectives are now trying to trace the thieves and the family have been putting up posters in local shop windows, offering a reward and appealing for information. The worst thing in the world that you suddenly find happening at such a dreadful moment is the robbers choosing to nick all your um, prized possessions, those being your memories. Anyone with information about the burglary is asked to contact detectives on 0300 333 or call Crime Stoppers anonymously on 0800 555 111. Kevin Birch, BBC Look East.